Welcome to Martial Art Mindset. My name is Calvin. My name is Kevin. And I'm Frankie. And we are the Blasian Twins. Now, we're here today because the way that... I call her Master Frankie. It's, it's weird to call you Frankie. <laughs> the way that we met is through martial arts training um, where I work at. She goes there and teaches hop keto. And we've been training for three years now? Three years. Three it you were four. almost four. You were twenty. Mm. Actually, you were twenty-three and a half when I met you. You remember? I do. <laughs> I do. You're twenty-three and a half. Mm. Wow. So yeah, we have her on because the knowledge she has of martial arts and just of life in general uh, is. We think it's an important story. Like in our first podcast, we said how uh, the African proverb where people are a library and when that when people die that library is burned that's what it's like so we want to document what we can and what we can keep alive so and we know you have a lot to say incredible library to share i do I, I don't know her as well as kevin but she has been showing us support like nobody else has and she's an amazing human being and oh thanks <laughs> yes and besides being an amazing human being amazing martial artist Yes, she beat me up earlier. We'll show, <laughs> Be sure to show that to you guys. So, so, Master Frankie, if you can just start off by telling us a little bit about how you got into martial arts, how that whole story is. I'm gonna I know, it's a long story. Uh, we got, that's why we got... <laughs> well, um, I was living in Florida at the time, and uh, I had... I was in school, electronics engineering degree. In my last semester, I had a very bad car accident with a head injury, mm. and school was over for me um, because of the head injury. And it was a long road to recovery. So I took up painting. I've never had an art class, and maybe you'll see some of those later. I brought some, taught myself to do it. So when we moved here, brochures that come home, I had a son, and in kindergarten, the brochures that come home in their book bags listed all the curricular activities that they offer at Parks and Rec in this. So my husband told me to go down and look for an art class. And when I came home, he asked me, you know, because they had charcoal and oil and watercolors, you name it. Mm -hmm. And he asked if I found an art class. And I said, yes. And he said, well, which one did you take? And I said, martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how my journey in martial arts started. Mm, started from like a uh, car wreck and just seeing it from a brochure. That, that's pretty amazing. So I think you chose the best type of art. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did because I had to learn from somebody. And it helped me. It helped me deal with what happened to me. It mm -hmm. helped me to learn patience and take a deep breath. And like we said earlier, it can be years in the future before you understand why things happened in your past. We said that earlier. Mm -hmm. And so you're, I don't think you're ever left empty handed. And I got a lot in exchange for it. And mm -hmm. so you can look at it any way you want. And you can be mad about it or you can take the things that are given in its place and run with it. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I love what I do. Mm. Yeah, we can and see it. We can tell. I can feel it. I felt yeah. it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I you gave I felt him. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So how many years have you been, been training? 25. 25. 25 this past September. That's a, oh, wow. that's a, that's a somebody who graduated college. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'd, li I'd like to hopefully have another 10 years in it and... That'll put, me, that'll longer, put me pretty please. close to 80. I think that'll get, put me close to 80. Oh, yeah. How, do you mind? Years. Okay, I know like people say don't ask women how old they are, but do you, do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm 67. Mm. Almost seven decades. <laughs> Almost seven how decades. How does that feel like, just perspective-wise? Because, like, you know, we, we are like... We're yeah, how does that feel? Because we, we like love hearing older people's story and people who have lived before us is there's so much more experience that they have and like no matter what that experience can't be replaced so yeah how does it like at the age you're at now how does it feel um when you started martial arts at 40 and how does it feel now i was about 40 almost 43 when i started martial arts i was in my mm -hmm. 40s so um i listened to your your podcast about the butts okay <laughs> The, the big old butts. The big old butts. <laughs> the big old butts. And I think if I was younger, I would have had a lot of those. Mm -hmm. oh. um, mm. At this time in my life, it was the perfect remedy for a lot of things I was going through. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've had classes where I've been made to sit on the floor and close my eyes for an hour. Mm, true meditation. A true meditation. That doesn't happen a lot nowadays. And I've... So that you have... You take martial arts, and both of y'all know you can be this big bad person, and I'm going to rip you apart, and it takes more discipline. And I, my students, when I teach, especially the kids, because when they're young, they're malleable, mm -hmm. and you teach them from the start, it is so much easier to just take a deep breath and think to yourself, you're not worth my time, and walk away, mm -hmm. because it's so much easier to just reach out and rip somebody apart, and we all know that feeling. Mm -hmm. So take that down. deep breath, let it go. And, and so I was able to, from, from the things I felt robbed for many years, and I had a lot of mm -hmm. anger and issues with my memory, and you see it in class, and so I go through this, and I look at my, yeah. because it still haunts me right. today. Now the student, hold on, I'll say something real quick, the, so students might laugh that, no, the students in our class, the, so there's, you haven't taught us form number eight yet, but, <laughs> so we go through uh, seven forms, and on the seventh one, she's always like, I've done this so many times. But what is it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? So being a master, it just, it doesn't mean I know everything. It means I've spent a lot of time here. And I explain that to my students. It does. I'm no better than you. Mm -hmm. I've just spent more time here. I know more than you, but I'm not better than you. Mm -hmm. And, and so, especially with my kids that I teach, it's don't be like me and don't be like you. Mm -hmm. Be the best you that you can be and don't compare yourself to other people and I don't compare my students mm -hmm. because everybody's not the same right. yeah that's true and, as and, far as body as far as the way they think yep as far as the spirit with inside them nobody, nobody what clicks the in their head what doesn't click what takes a little bit more time yeah absolutely mm. and so moving on with that understanding with martial arts in the mindset where does that start with you as in how do you build your mentality? How do you so what are things that goes in your mind? Yeah. Is the patterns of thinking that you have? Like anything dealing with just the mind? There's a lot. <laughs> you, you two know there, there's a <laughs> lot. Um, it could, I, I walk in there and I never have a plan. When I walk to class, I never have a plan. I greet you and I greet you and I greet you. And how's your day and how are you? And you're going to determine how we work tonight. Mm -hmm. um, it can't be about me. I mean, I, will, I need to teach you, but if you need something extra today, that's where we focus on. Mm -hmm. And I notice a lot of my students, a lot of them, they need the mind mm -hmm. and they need the mindset. And there's some students that they need the extra hoorah and mm -hmm. they need the extra kudos. And that's what gets them to the next week. And as long as you're better this week than last week, we're good. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you improve yourself and don't be like you, don't try to compete with somebody because you'll always be competing. Right. Mm -hmm. Compete we, with we, yourself. We were doing that with each other for the longest time. It was just, at first it started off as a healthy competition, but then as we got older and because we're twins, we didn't really have this idea of individuality mm -hmm. amongst ourselves. Yeah, that we fought that a lot with that. It, it like like people would greet us and they'd be like, hey, what's up? How's your brother? So, wait, wait, but what about me right here? <laughs> right, I'm an individual. So, <laughs> yep. When we had that competition with each other, I, there were some things he could do that I couldn't do. There were some, some things, things he could I do that, that he couldn't. <laughs> and it's like, I wish I could do that, but like, how can I do something else better? And it, once we stopped that, like as soon as we cut that out, we were able to grow. So thank you for sharing that. One, one problem, one of the things that is really hard to deal with being me, um, an older woman, a little short one. Um, oh, yeah, you can talk about that. I'm body. unassuming. <laughs> talk about the body. Just yeah, talk about I'm your unassuming. body. Yeah, I mean, your body. Because like, like you said, everybody's different. So everybody's the, different. Mm -hmm. um, so I have, I'll have, when I have new students, especially males, they'll walk and they'll look at me like, really? <laughs> said, okay, Okay, you'll be mine tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll go home believers at the end of the night. And, and, and you can work them real quick. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so this says everything, and um, how people see you is up to you, and it's how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm very hard on my girls, on my mm -hmm. teenage girls and my high school girls, and there is 
<laughs> this, mm -hmm. and there's this. Mm -hmm. And they all say different things. Um, if you want to be confident, you want to be taken seriously and not messed with, you know, it's shoulders back and it's chin up. And we talk about chin up all the time in class. Mm -hmm. And it's not arrogance, it's just, it's self-respect. Mm -hmm. And you're a lot less likely to be picked on if you don't round these shoulders and drop your chin because mm -hmm. this is insecurity. Mm -hmm. And, and this is literal weight. Absolutely. And so it goes really deep as far as you get out of other people which you're willing to put into yourself. Mm. And it's got to start with you. Mm. Wow, that was beautiful. You, yeah. you just can't be this person that expects and demands people to respect you until you can show it to yourself. This leads me to another question, talking about posture and carrying yourself. Um, something I've been teaching people whenever I teach is, of course, like you showed earlier, back straight. And that's simple, just understanding spine alignment and allowing the, the spinal fluid to be able to go to the neurons and everything else. How to, so as you have gotten older, you know, you always hear people that get older with back pain. And it's that, how, how has that been with you? I was about to apologize before we started if I look like I have a <laughs> stick up my back because <laughs> I'm used to sitting like this. Uh -huh. um, being older, I move all the time. I work out every day. I run. And the more you move, the better you feel. And you have that, there's an old saying, an object in motion stays in motion, an object at rest stays at rest. Mm -hmm. And I feel better, like last night or Wednesday night in class, I said, y'all watch out because I'm going to get a workout today. <laughs> and, and the suffering is real. And it's mental too. It's not mm -hmm. just a physical thing. So you look good or you feel good. It's up here. Mm -hmm. and, and it creates a lot of endorphins and everything else in your brain. And it's a feel-good thing. Mm -hmm. And you miss that for a couple of days and then a week. Then you stop sleeping at night and you're ornery. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing better than going hitting the hills with a pair of tennis shoes on mm -hmm. and working up that sweat and screaming trying to get up that hill. I can do this. <laughs> and, and you and get to feeling after. It's Absolutely. so encouraging that like, you accomplish something. Here, Absolutely. Actually. Is that how you feel whenever you do her warm-ups after? Oh, um, when I get through them? He always has to go to the bathroom. I need a drink. I said, we'll wait for you. Everybody squat and wait for Mr. Ross. And so he's always got an excuse to leave the mat. Kind of. Well, my in the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the car's down the end of the parking lot, so I'll be back at 12. So... No, her, her warm ups are serious. <laughs> yeah. oh, so, warm, it's a warm I did. out. He showed me a few warm up what you, and it was like, oh, this is a lot. And it's simple movements. Though, They're very simple, and they have everything to do with martial arts. They're not just exercises to make you feel pain or to get your heart rate going. They're actually martial arts moves. When we squat, it's for your muscle memory, for making sure your legs are strong because this doesn't have to be strong. These are guiding. Your strength mm -hmm. comes from your feet on up. Mm -hmm. It's got to start with your feet up. And these will guide you properly. Mm -hmm. Even when I run, my hands do this. And if people look at me and it's like, don't mess with me because I'm... <laughs> I, I do this the whole time I'm running. You know, anytime mm -hmm. I'm doing... It's, it's just... To Always practice the, the yep. micro movements. Absolutely. And, and like you said, it helps guiding. So like if you don't practice the guiding of it, then how are you going to get used to that? And you're moving your feet at the same time when yes. you run. So that's, I think we talked about that earlier in the training too. Yes. Um, about using, uh, learning how to move our body in conjunction with, you talk about it a lot in class, in tandem with each other, not just singularly. But as this hand moves, the other one moves. They move in tandem always. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you... If you have more to say about that, could you go into more detail about that? And I, I'm, I just want to add on because, like, from experience of growing, like we were saying earlier, it's just, it was weird to know how to move this thing yes. <laughs> with martial arts. Mm -hmm. right? And then let alone put, like, a weapon in your hand and you've never done it before. So what what is that way that you encourage people to be able to learn it faster, more effectively, more efficiently? It's open up the box because starting at warm-ups, every move we make is what we use in class. Even mm -hmm. when, it's, when we bend one leg and this foot is flat on the floor, well, that's your sidekick. Most people don't realize that. And I have mm -hmm. to say, okay, we go back and let me show you. Remember the stretch we did? Mm -hmm. And we held it. That's your muscle memory so that your foot moves that way. That is a sidekick. And then we do these back and forth. Um, so the other night when we broke out in dance, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Stay in the box. Did okay. You pull that clip? Yeah, I'll pull so that clip we'll, we'll pull that clip up. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and it was all about movement because this guides everything. Mm-hmm. And and if I have a hold of you, the way I move, you're going to move the same because we are attached. We've now become one. Mm-hmm. So. I don't want to fight you with my hands. You're bigger and stronger than me. So let me move me to put me in place to take you. So, and we've done that in class all the, a lot, especially when you put the big people with the, with the girls people, or yeah. the shorter people. Yeah, like we're, like there's a lot of techniques where she'll just, like if my hand's higher, I'm taller than her. She doesn't try to move my arm or anything. Or try she'll, to stand up on your toes or stand up too tall or anything. She doesn't oh, no. try to move me. What she does is move around me. Mm. water flowing around a rock Mm -hmm. and and it's so much easier that way when you start to understand a couple of students have broken out and they're starting to understand that um you always have the big people they can muscle their way through anything scott anyway anything Mm -hmm. people like me i get one shot Mm -hmm. and i had some really good teachers about well you know Mm -hmm. try this and it was like wow it was Mm mind-blowing just so it's fluidity Mm -hmm. And as we keep the fluid conversation going, I want to now move on to talking about just the experience as a woman doing mm-hmm. martial arts. Because, you know, it's very male-dominated because men were going out and the warriors and that stuff. But there are women warriors. Too. That are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman, <laughs> exactly. Yes. You can watch her all day long. Um <laughs> It's no, very we were just talking about Hannah too. Yeah, the show. Mm-hmm. it oh, is so. very empowering as a as a female to do martial arts, mm-hmm. especially hat keto, mm-hmm. because it encompasses so many different martial arts. And just to learn, you don't have to be superwoman or strong. You, you know this kind of thing. You just have to be smart. It starts up here. It starts right here, and to acknowledge a danger zone or the free zone or the escape zone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not just think, oh, I know all this stuff, bring it on. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. That doesn't happen. So you need to use your, your head, um, but it is very empowering mm-hmm. on the mat. And so uh, how do you see that empowerment when you're teaching other women? What, what do you see the change? Because I, I, could, I could just imagine how many people you've trained over the years and, and the yeah, stories uh-huh. that you have to share about that. I just really want to hear about that. There's some things I will never teach the men, ever. Understandably, you should, and you, should, uh, yeah. you see me go over, girls. Let me show you something. Just going to show you, mm-hmm. um, on the mat because this is we call the mat our perfect world, because mm-hmm. everything always works out perfect and techniques look beautiful. I step outside those doors and everything you've learned is down the tubes. <laughs> it it really truly is. Mm-hmm. But what you expect to learn on this mat is reaction, mm-hmm. and the not panic don't let this shut down Mm. to understand your surroundings Mm. to always see i like you we talked about earlier i always do this and you know you Mm -hmm. walk down and you can look in the window of the stores there's somebody behind me this Mm -hmm. guy's been behind me for about three minutes now let's see what does he want behind me Mm -hmm. so you know versus somebody who stares at the ground or the girls that are texting and it's like you want to just slap them one time could you pick your face up (laughs) see what's Uh going on around you and um, so it becomes, let me show you what to do. Mm-hmm. And, and it's happened once or twice. And I have, um, I've had a couple of students and I have one now. Hope he doesn't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll need an insurance bucket soon. Just like yeah, disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you get your feelings hurt, we'll just give you. <laughs> They'll be fine. But it was, it was said to me a couple of weeks ago that, um, I have a hard time respecting any black belt, no matter how many stripes. Now he's only a blue belt. I don't have, doesn't respect any black belt, no matter how many stripes, unless they can take me on this mat. First off, as a blue belt, <laughs> you need to shut your mouth. <laughs> so I just kind of looked at him and thought, did you really just say that to me? Wow. And he's bigger than y'all. Mm. And, and so it's okay. So we're working and I said, come on over here. Let me show you how to do that a different way. Mm-hmm. I hate doing that. However, um, I don't care what, and, and I trust me, there, I still have so much to learn, mm-hmm. but I mm-hmm. always know more than you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sorry in the end when you pick yourself up off the floor, but don't say that to me. Mm-hmm. Because you, 
when we worked today and we were doing knife techniques, you go in one direction. Well, I can't take you. I just whip you right back the other way. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what I did on the mat because you're pushing against me to show me how strong you are. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'll just use your energy in the opposite direction. I felt it. And then yeah, I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> and then so so there. If you'll open yourself up to learn all of this and understand the movement of when being pushed pulled and when being pulled push, mm -hmm. you know that's half of it. Half, mm -hmm. Is just opening this up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That reminds me a lot of uh, when Bruce Lee said, um, "When something expands, you contract. When something contracts, you expand." That's also in uh, from Sun Tzu, the art of war, too. Mm -hmm. You know the same ideas that and just you you're using what you have to be able to adapt in whatever environment that you're in yes and that's that's what I love seeing why I love seeing you move and you do what you do because not only can I see that you can do it but it's like she can do it how many other women can do it absolutely question uh one thing I think a lot of people have seen in like animes or like just because they see martial arts, they just see it's like this, just ha ha ha, ki, ha you know, but there's also the spiritual side of it. So what is that spiritual side of martial arts to you? The one night that we had to sit for a solid hour with eyes closed, there was a purpose behind it. And it was to reflect on us. Mm -hmm. And how far are you willing to go? Mm -hmm. And what are you willing to do to somebody else? And are you willing to break them, hurt them, shoot them, whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and you'd be surprised the things that go through your head in one hour to come full circle back to, do I really want to hurt somebody or just enough to save myself? Mm -hmm. And that in, that in itself was a revelation to me because everybody they start martial arts and they think well i'm just going to go out and hit you and break your kneecaps and everything else mm -hmm. and it's like there is a side to you that's i don't need to do that wow even that breath that you just took like yeah, it, it made me pause like it's the yin and the yang really like so it sounds like could you how how that feel like? Did it feel like the yin and the yang in your it head did. while it was going? Happening? It did. Mm -hmm. And a breath. And so even when we do those forms, can you mm -hmm. explain the importance of breathing and what you're actually envisioning in your mind as you do? And how does the breathing affect your we, spirit too? When we were younger, uh, I didn't understand it at first. I thought it was just a cool way to use my imagination when they're showing us just. And he's like, just imagine and. I, mm -hmm. I don't I remember, even remember what the guy's name was, but it was some Korean instructor. And he's just imagine you're holding this boulder, and then you push, push it up, pull it up. This energy and just that visualization. What are some visualization techniques? We actually do that in warm up. We man. do that in warm up after she kills her arms. <laughs> <laughs> she is. always asks us like, okay, so how long do you want to do this exercise? And this exercise, we got to keep our arms up, out for a long time. We pump it. <laughs> Different Sir, directions. Right. Flip over. We get Pilates. to about five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. It, and took, that, it took me like a year to be able to do the whole five minutes <laughs> without dropping my hands. So at the end, you take a big, deep breath. Breath feeds your body. And, and it replenishes and it goes in. And when you blow out nice and slow, it gets rid of everything. It kind of clears your mind. It clears everything. You just were in excruciating agony. And now you're able to release mm -hmm. all of that, breathe back in, and you start anew. Mm -hmm. To me, that's what that breath is. You start anew because you expel it all, you bring it back in, and you're good. Mm. You're ready to go. Wow. That's very important. Yes. It reminds me of that every breath is not the same. They're all different. All, all the breaths you take, like the breath you just took, is not going to be the same as one you... <laughs> yep. Different time, different energy, is renewed. So, yeah, that's amazing. And I have a question more about the spirit and if you, you're open to what share whatever you want, but I just want to know, have there been times where your spirit has really been broken and how did you overcome that? Yes. Oh, how many times has my, oh, how many times this, this in podcast. your life does your spirit get broken? Mm -hmm. Um, this podcast wouldn't be able to cover that. So like, <laughs> what, are, what are some that come to mind? 
a whole lot of them. Uh, like I can go back to that car accident that I had. Um, things that I've never told people about what happened at that time, and because some people look, they look, you're you're just like cuckoo. But I'm, you know, <laughs> but I'm it's sure not. There's other people that have gone through the same thing in other capacities, and hearing your story can help them because it will make them not feel alone or like there's nobody that understands it's like i'm the only one that's going through it other people think i'm crazy like now i'm going crazy because like is it true that i'm going crazy when that happened i had dropped my daughter off at school and my son was in a car seat he was 18 months old and something said drop him off at daycare mm -hmm. and it was december 18th i'll never forget it was exactly seven days before christmas so i dropped him off at daycare it's december 18th right now actually wow yeah. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I just look. I change that every day. Yes. <laughs> so that would be 28 oh, okay. years ago. Wow. Oh, this is... And um, it was December 18th, and it was head-on. A nice little car, big car. And I remember nothing, except I remember this person outside my car. And I was slumped over a steering wheel and couldn't move, and she kept saying, He's okay. Your son is okay. And when they, when they got there to to remove me from this car, I kept saying, "Is he said was anybody I with you?" And I said, "Cause they were looking for a baby because the car seat had flown." Oh. And, oh my goodness. And I said, "The lady outside my car and and the fireman said there is nobody." I said, "Yes, the lady. She was all in white." Mm. And it was an incredible experience at that moment because she just kept reassuring me, your son is okay. Mm -hmm. Your son is okay. Oh. And um, I didn't tell anybody that for a very long, I told my wow. mother and that is the only person I ever told. Mm -hmm. And Sutton told me up front to take him out of that car and leave him at the babysitters that day. Mm. And I did. And wow. it was, I think back, like I said earlier, it could be years in the future before you understand your past. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I think about that a bit, mm. quite a lot. Mm. That is incredible. Thanks now, for I'm, sharing that. Why were you like kind of hesitant to share that? I'm not hesitant with you two, but a lot of people will look at you and think, you know, she, it, it's a due to your head injury. No, it mm. wasn't. It wasn't. Mm. I know in my heart it wasn't. Because mm -hmm. I, I believe you because our, our dad shared a story with us where he was traveling in Germany, had mm -hmm. our sisters who were babies at the time, one a toddler, one a baby, in the back seat, our mom there, and they're driving on the Autobahn, it was snowed out, so they were driving really slow. And then the tire went out. Mm -hmm. So it's freezing cold outside. He got, uh, our, our sisters were in there, they were, they were really young in the car, they were in the back seat, our mom in the seat car, and our dad, he, knew, he knows how to change tires and stuff, but it's snow all over the place and ice, and. He doesn't want them to get out the car. To, so he goes out. He doesn't want them to get out so he can jack it up and all that. He wants them to stay in. He goes out the car and somebody's there. And, he's like, and there was nobody around. I said, hey, what's, what's going on? You need, I'll help you out. Go ahead back in the car. Be in there with your family. And then he jacks the car up, changes the tire. My dad's inside the car. Boom, boom. And the, they feel the car go back down. And after they feel that, he goes over to my mom. And it's like, hey, give me you know a few dollars, whatever we have so that we can give him the money. And then he goes out to hand him the money and the guy is gone. Is that, and there's snow everywhere. It's like nobody else around them. It's giving me goosebumps. And then it was just, it was- <laughs> No tracks. No tracks. It was like they saw it and they disappeared. There were no tracks coming up to the car, no tracks going away. It's just like this guy appeared out of the middle of nowhere and then was changed his tire. So for you to share that, it's like that, there's a lot of other people that have Similar oh, experiences. Yes, uh, that are and they're afraid to say something or don't want to for how they're going to be looked at. Yes, mm -hmm. I think my dad still lives at home with my mom, even though he's been gone for forty years, mm -hmm. and things that happen. Jaji is grandfather in Polish, and Jaji's home. You know, the lights mm -hmm. go on, and I've had an experience when you told, you told me about that. Okay. When I was there, um, when my mom fell this summer and hurt herself, and I went down to help and. I got stranded there because uh, her and my sister tested positive for COVID. So I was there for 21 days. And in the middle of the night, laying in the bedroom, I was sick. The lights went on. Mm. And I turned them off. And I'm going, okay, what's going on? 
lights go back on. And it was a very strange experience. And at that point, it was like, okay, go check on your mother. Mm -hmm. And my mother was laying in the other room and she was going, ah. she had COVID. Mm -hmm. and, and she had trouble breathing for a couple of days. She recovered just fine, but it was, the lights kept coming on. Mm -hmm. And we, we attribute that to my dad, mm -hmm. <laughs> that he's there. And everything that happens, it's strange in the house. It's Jaji's home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did it feel like just a, a, a layer of protection? It did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It did. And it literally is like light. It yeah. Literally is light. And it was the ceiling fan light and the nightstand light. It just wasn't yeah, a little light. It has these lights you can turn off with your voice. And we don't have Alexa in my mother's house. <laughs> <laughs> there was no Alexa. Um, so, yeah, that has happened several times in mm. my mom's house. Um, when I left, she has this. Oh, they're playing with another toy. <laughs> always, always with my dad. And we know it. Um, mm hmm she has this, my dad, before he died, gave her this little music box and it plays Dr. Shivago. Mm. Wind it up, wind up broke 30 years ago. Mm. I came, when I came home from my last trip, she called me up on the phone. I wasn't even hardly off the plane. And um, you would not believe what happened, Frankie. I'm getting ready to walk out and the music box started playing. Wow. I said, what? She goes, and I can't turn it off. It's playing Dr. Shivago. Mm. It was their wedding anniversary. It was the date of their wow. wedding anniversary. It was that strange. There's no coincidences at all. No. There's none. 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 Just like how um, before we were born, four years exactly to mm -hmm. the day. We had a, we had a sister that was... Um, that passed away from miscarriage. She was born, but then she died because she was uh, premature, but it was four years exactly after we were born. Not just because it is a coincidence, but because, you know, what we were talking about earlier, there's certain allies that you meet in your life. There's certain people that you meet and is there's no accidents. You know, there's no accidents that we're speaking 20 years to the day, 28 years? 28, 28, 28, years. 28 years. To the day. To the day. To the day. Wow. I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> okay. We had no clue either. It's not like we planned this. We, we planned it. Oh, we planned it, but we didn't plan it. Like, this day, but it happened. So, and that's what really got you started. Like after that accident, that's when martial arts started going to come into your life. Yes. So, and how, so how does it feel when you impact other people's lives with the experiences of martial arts you have? There's no better, you know, you're a teacher. There is no better feeling when that, we call it the Helen Keller syndrome, the light bulb flicks on and they, they are, they're excited and they go home and I give a, I gave a belt test last week and I told the kids, I said, it's the best feeling for a teacher when you guys did what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is empowering to them. And you know, um, there's a way to teach kids. They have to be totally different than adults because they mm -hmm. need more than adults. They feed off of you. Mm -hmm. And um, so you have your autistic children, your needs children, your high energy children, and you go, okay, you have 12 more minutes to the You had six more minutes and you can do this. You got four minutes and, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, they're so excited when mm -hmm. it's done and there's no better feeling as a teacher to bring that out in students. It's such a good feeling. Yeah, it is it, a good feeling. Mm -hmm. that, that's what keeps me teaching. Like, um, it also, how does teaching, we, we talked about it in, when you were beating me up, but how does, <laughs> <laughs> how does teaching affect you? I have to pull back. Sometimes mm -hmm. it, it, it's a lot of discipline because um, there's so much I want to say. And there's mm -hmm. so much I want to do and so much I want you to see and I have to help you see that mm. I have to help you as a student see that in the right light mm. and mm. Um, so when you walk into class and like I said I see you and you and you and see how, what kind of mood you're in what kind of day you've had is how we're going to work out mm -hmm. and as a teacher you see that all at once yeah and that's, and how you, that's, a that's good why teacher. you don't come with a specific plan but more of the idea of what you're going to do absolutely I the, know the where you are feed, by... Do you feed the, off the energy of the student? And all that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like we talked about earlier, is we'll start, and if I get louder, they get louder, and I get softer, and they get lazy, and then I have to just yell at them, and then I'll just stop talking all together, and it's silent in the room, and that's when somebody will kick in, and somebody else will kick in. So it, that's another yin and yang in the classroom mm. on the mat. 
Mm. Teacher, student, student, teacher. Yes. This student is the teacher. The yes. teacher is the student. Yes. Mm. And I learn every week. Every single week I'm in there and I might be the teacher, but I'm also the learner mm-hmm. because I learn from you mm-hmm. and I learn from you and I learn from the students. And like I said earlier, if it's not something I'm learning in martial arts, it's something I don't want to do. I don't want to be in this place. I've, I've learned mm-hmm. because you have experiences in your life every day, many of them, mm-hmm. and you should learn from them, yes. not just here they go, whatever. And it could be anything, right? It could be anything. while you're taking the trash out, you see something happen. It could be while you're just watching birds or watching trees or watching people walk by. Like hold the door open for somebody, and guess what? They'll hold the door open for somebody, or one day they'll mm-hmm. hold the door open for you. You know, mm-hmm. it's like what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing all that. What I want to move on to now with you is there's plenty of other hobbies <laughs> oh yeah and which actually you said it yeah you said the hobbies uh you mind if i take this i'm gonna take i'm just stealing just from steal you. It. <laughs> so uh you said you have to get them to see what you see in your head yes so i know you, you know what hobby this is leading to oh yes so what is the hobby we're talking about <laughs> okay so so after i had this head injury and i went through all these metamorphoses and changes and the anger and why me and you know, trying to do school and walk out, and I don't remember the past six hours, and it was, mm. I thought, okay, there's something. And before we moved here, and before I even started martial arts, I went to the store and I bought paint brushes and paint, and I'd never had an art lesson in my life, and I just sat down one day and went, and mm. thought, Wow, did I just do... I don't even remember doing that. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how I did that. This was before you did martial arts? It's before I did martial arts. Mm. And it kind of opened my mind and it freed me. And I would get up the next morning and I'd look at it and go, I don't believe I did that. Mm. That's incredible. So where do you think that came from? Like, If you don't believe you did it, where do you think that came from? Not left empty-handed. Mm. So talking about not knowing for years in advance why something happened in your past. You can see it any way you want. I choose to see the positive side of it, and I worked at Bell South at the time, and they had plans for me. Mm -hmm. I'm the only, and I have an article in my briefcase. Um, It's from the newspaper where I'm the only female in this engineering program ever. And wow, you never I, told me that. So she's so full of surprises. <laughs> um, <laughs> I aced out of all of my classes, didn't have to take my finals, and all of a sudden this happened to me. And it was like, mm. why did you do this? And so it took years to realize it wasn't that. There was a bigger plan because the plan for me was I'm going to go here and there and I'm going to be showcased and I'm smart and I can do this electronics and the engineering and blah, blah, blah. But I have children and a husband and a family and a house. So what? Whoa, take a breath. Mm. So There's when all that, that happened during that time, did you feel like you were missing out on opportunities? Absolutely. Something? That's part of that anger. That was part of that pent-up, why did you let this happen to me? I was going mm. somewhere. Well, mm. I went in a different direction, and I was still going somewhere. I just didn't know it yet. Mm. Uh, and what advice would you give to somebody who has that feeling? Has that anger? Like, how did you anger, deal with it? Like, what did you? Was, how did you uh, channel your anger? Because I know there's different ways to channel it, so... The advice that you would give to somebody to be able to overcome that, to open themselves up to look the light. There is something there. Look, try things. Um, I started running, and I would cry, and I'd run, and I'd scream, and I'd cry, and my husband would throw my shoes at me when I'd get in this mood. Go run. <laughs> he'd take <laughs> me and push me out. Of, he'd take me she, and push me out of the car at the head tra- the trailhead, and go go run. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> she actually was a little bit more irritated in class Wednesday because she came in and was like, "I didn't do a workout today." <laughs> <laughs> and everybody went, "Uh oh!" <laughs> and that's when this one goes, ah, "I'm going to rest for a few minutes. I'm going in the back room." <laughs> so, um, if you just take that deep breath and and realize there is something there, you just haven't found it yet. If you don't see it. Mm. So you, you, can, you can look, but you need to see. Mm-hmm. And, and you can hear, but you need to listen. Mm-hmm. And, and they're, they're totally different things. And you can hear a baby cry and just shove a bottle in its mouth. Or you can hear a baby cry and pick it up and soothe it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I found something to soothe my sores. Mm-hmm. And, and it was the paintbrushes. 
on canvas. And how long after the accident and all of that was did the the canvases and the art and everything come? About a year. Mm. About a year of I can't even tell you um, the anger that I went through. Mm. I it it was violent place. anger. It was mm. violent anger. And it was part it wasn't just the mood, it was actually the injury. And I was oh, explained to me, chemical... it's a chemical brain injury. Wow. And it was a very, vi and it was, and the, the more you get upset about it, the worse it became. And mm. sometimes you see me it's in like, class, like, I go, la, 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 because the words are gone. And uh -huh. it still happens to this day. But if I get frustrated, it's like, there goes the wall. Mm -hmm. And so it's I have like to bring the wall back down. It's protecting yourself. I know, like, sometimes you say, okay, I'm going to do this and do that. And then you come and you're like, wait, what did? Yeah. What was and, <laughs> and I say, and are there triggers that that cause that wall to shoot up? What What are some of those triggers for you? Frustration, mm -hmm. or um, in class going to do something and this quick, it's like closed. And I'm. I've, yeah, I've seen it before. It's, it a couple happen. weeks it ago to, in yeah. class, I said, you know, I don't feel bad in here because I feel like y'all are my family. Mm -hmm. And I'll do something and I'll turn around, and I'll look at it, Nathan, I'll go. Was that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> I, I'm not the person just because I outrank you by 20 years that I'm going to say, yes, it is right because I said so. It can't be that. She literally so did it. We were I'm like, very humble. <sighs> yes. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I had to take a deep breath before he, <laughs> before he corrected, if, if I had any corrections. But um, I'm a very humble. I don't mind being corrected. Mm -hmm. We all need correction. Which I, I know a lot of, you know, the can't teach old dog new tricks. What, what do you have for people who are that don't know that they're in that mentality. What? Because, yeah, sometimes you're unaware. The, the discernment that. of that is it. And I know I, I know you have a lot of discernment, you know, to, from just being a martial artist. But as far as that, what would you say to somebody who needs that extra growth to get over themselves? Give it time. Mm. Find a passion. But, you know, and um, try whatever you want. Because if, if you don't, so um, I'll use this as an example. A lot of my students being young kids, every year I lose them for three months here in this section for three months. These kids are out playing baseball. These kids are out playing football until mm -hmm. the parents go. You'll never find their greatness if you mm -hmm. don't let them try other things. Mm -hmm. that is true. They mm -hmm. will come back if they want to be here and they'll be better for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, find something that you like, even if it's gardening or walking or running or whatever it is, because something will come. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that I wanted to do. My grandfather was an incredible artist. He never had an art class in his life. My brother. So it just runs in the family. Yes. In your DNA. <laughs> in the DNA mm -hmm. and my mother's brother actually painted the last supper on their on their dining room wall with the all the, my mother has one because yeah, uh, she you still owns the house and it's still in that house yeah if you can have like a picture like, I can get you a it, picture of that and he painted all the apostles and the last meal and everything wow. and I know um I've done when when Kevin went to school, my Kevin. Oh he, yeah, okay. My Talk Kevin. So I wanted to say this. First off, it's funny we're making an Oreo. <laughs> uh, second, she also had. How old is he? He is thirty on January fourth. Thirty on January fourth. Uh, we're twenty eight now, and yeah, it's I'm the black Kevin. And <laughs> so I Kevin. introduce everybody. This is my son Kevin, and this is not my not so white son Kevin. <laughs> That's so <laughs> my other son Kevin and um, I forgot now where we're so this is okay I'm not gonna get frustrated what we're we talking about oh uh, we're talking this about happens the, all the time no uh, it's fine we, we just, sorry I just added a side note uh, talking about the art last supper oh yes um, so when when we moved up here after this and and I was going through rehabilitation I spent kindergarten through fifth grade with my son every day. And it was part of the relearning process. It's not like I forgot everything, but I had to learn how to remember. Wow. And so I was in his classroom volunteering, taking students for six years, five days a week. And the Hispanic influence was huge in Forsyth County. And I would help them learn English, and I'd take them in the hallway. And because I would look at something, something like Jack and Jill went up the hill, and I'd look at it. And all it was was white paper with marks on it. 
it meant nothing to me and I had to relearn all of this and so I went to school with him every day for six years wow every day Talk from about, start to finish. Talk about talk humility to and relearning. Oh, yeah, oh my the gosh. humility you have to put yourself at to be able to just go ahead and go through that again, like you twice in a lifetime. This is me, <laughs> and I want to talk a little bit more about. I have you. control over that. There's not a lot of things you have control of over in your life, and the things that you have control over, you really should address them and take control. Mm. And that was something that was for me, and. I'm no better than a kindergartner. No, I was not smarter than a fifth grader. Right. But, Are you smart? So the, the, the knowledge was here, but the CBI, which is a cognitive brain injury, is short-term memory, which means it never got past here to be in the CPU processor um, in the back of the head. So the learning part just was dead. Mm, so you just really learned to build that muscle up and make yes. it stronger. I had to learn. And you started with basics. I had to learn. I did. Very basics, which I basics. think a lot of people especially when it comes to martial arts, just want to jump to the advance. I see that all the time. <laughs> and it's just like, come on, learn your basics. Get that foundation down. Like, and it's incredible. I feel, I'd like to attribute what is in your DNA and just you realizing that you had to do with your art. Are there certain pieces that stand out to you? That make that evoke an emotion in you, and and you know you could yeah, and we'll get a shot of it in a little bit. So if you want to, we could wrap this up and just use the cameras and get the shot. So yeah, we can yeah, do yeah. the outro here, and then um, then we could just get you explaining your art. We'll set it up, make it look nice. Yay! Okay. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can explain it. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say? Because I know you have a lot to say, but like, is there something that's just on the forefront of your mind, or been in your mind to, or been Something that you've wanted to share to the world that you've never been able to. Just be humble. It'll take you far in life. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes stop and listen. You don't always have to interject. Because my dad used to have this saying, take all the advice in the world, it's free. You don't have to use it, but you can store it and just mm -hmm. listen. You know, don't don't shut people out just because they want to talk and it's not what you want to hear. Because years later, you may say, wow, they had a real point. Mm. So you can store it in the bank somewhere. Mm -hmm. But um, I never walk into class thinking I'm it. <laughs> I don't think you ever see I That is not me. No, it's not, not at all. It's not me. Mm -hmm. No, it's just because you are. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Mm -hmm. um, the great I am is, you know, if you learn I, the great I am. And you just are. We just are. And it's just incredible to see your individuality and you're not trying to be anybody else at all. That's why you, I remember you told me at, at dinner not too long ago, that's why you uh, did your art and didn't take classes because you didn't want other people influencing you you wanted it to just be your art yes i showed i showed somebody some pictures i started taking pictures of them because they're all over my house mm. and somebody says oh man if you want to ever take some art lessons i said no i have never had an art lesson never even in high school mm. in my life and and so this person will say, oh, this person's great because I have a friend who's taken classes and you should see, you know, she's learned how to do like he does. And right there I said, no, I want to do like me. Mm. And, and so I, I brought pictures from when I very first started, That's from my very scene. beginning to what I've just done and how far it's come. Um, all self-taught. All self. Mm. Right down to colors. And, and I've like, seen, I've seen you attribute oh to, because uh, I'm sure we're going to see the progression of how you've gone. Um, could you attribute martial arts to helping you with that progression? Yes, because I see things differently. Mm -hmm. You see things, you see how people walk, you see what they're doing, you see your surroundings. I go out and when we were talking about the pictures and the colors and uh, when the leaves were changing, I thought, I want that color on my picture. Mm -hmm. And so take my sunglasses and friend, take a picture of it so I could make that color. Mm -hmm. But when I go outside, I see, I see, ever since this thing, I see the world a little different maybe than most people. Maybe they just haven't stopped to really see. They look, but they don't see. Mm -hmm. 
and I see dark and light and depth and trees and I see individuality, um, you know, this color is here, I don't see a forest. I see every tree and I see the ground and I see, it's just, it's weird mm -hmm. how you, when you get to that spot that you can see things like that. You just don't mm -hmm. see the outdoors. Now, we were just talking about that in the car earlier because like, sometimes it feels like a lot because there's just so much love for everything every moment and it's just like there's so much experience i know of just love that's why I'm like, i know i'm sensitive because it just love everything because understanding that if i have a purpose then everything else has a purpose mm -hmm. and that has really taught me to see like love is the purpose of everybody mm -hmm. That one now. Uh, I wanted to ask a question about like you see. You're not just seeing. You're you don't just see the forest. You see all of it. How do you see yourself fitting in that? It's so much bigger than me, but I I just feel like I want to be able to bring, and and I sit sometimes with canvases and, and this is just, I brought a lot of them, but it's just a <laughs> yeah, fraction <laughs> now. And, mm -hmm. and it's, um, it's bigger than me, mm -hmm. but I feel like when, when my schooling, I don't want to say it was taken away. My life was, it just, there was a fork in the road and I wasn't meant to go right. I went left. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's brought me something totally different and probably more enjoyable, a life at home with my family and um, it's wonderful. It's stress relief. It's a deep breath. And when you go outside, it's, it's like, thank you. Mm. And the cold, fresh air. And like I said, and especially when you're hiking and the sound of the dirt, it, mm -hmm. it's, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's different. You, you see things and you appreciate. Mm -hmm. You're not just there right. tearing mm -hmm. up the road. You appreciate. Appreciate it's every... a different type of stimulus when you take the technology away. Yes. You mm -hmm. take away, and it's just you in the environment. Yes. And I think a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, because it's like, yeah, be inside more than ever, but it's already been that transition period with the cell phones, the laptops, let alone VR. Every, it's like making people stay indoors more. But that outdoor connection, how important is that to you? It's awesome. You know, um, I always have a cell phone on me. It's the greatest weapon. We'll get into that later on. <laughs> it is a Crack great Crack your weapon. skull open with a cell phone <laughs> and a coubaton in my other hand. But a lot of times, I don't even put earbuds in. Um, I need to hear. I need to hear the silence. I like to hear the, the gravel or the dirt under my feet. And I love to hear myself... <sighs> you know, that breath that goes in and comes out and it's cleansing and it's refreshing and it's renewing and there's a hill and I can do this and hear that instead of loud music in your ears. And it's, it's, um, it's refining my soul every time I do it. I don't know how to explain it because it's such a good feeling. I can't even put it into words. It's, Awesome. We can, I can feel it in here. I don't know if yeah, you guys I can, can feel it there, but... If y'all want to feel it, just go outside <laughs> and get your exercise on. Get some, Use all what she is sharing to help yourself. You know, that's why we wanted to bring you on, because we just know that that bank is huge of what you have. Even with that head injury, that it seems like you just opened another vault of mm -hmm. your mind from what you all just shared. It's like that picture back there. I'm, I'm seeing depth and color and oh, yeah, darks and lights. And I'm not just seeing flowers on that picture on that TV right there. It's just like, that's how I see things. Yeah, you see all of it. And it's, it's very appreciative of it instead of just, yep, great picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And just sit and see everything. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to see. If you'll just look, your eyes are open, just look. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. amazing. If you want to wow. wrap it up for us. Yeah, Kevin. I think we're good. And then we'll look, look at the pictures. But Master Frankie... It's hard for me to just call you Frankie. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, my son. <laughs> Thank you for coming on this podcast for Thank us. And you. We, we Aww, really, you're and like, I've, you already know, I've been wanting to record you. I'm, you're, I'm just like, every time I see you, I'm like, hey, you gotta make, or not every time, but like, I'll see you, I'm like, we gotta make something. How long have I been saying that? For like a, a year now, <laughs> a year yeah. plus now. Like, and I'm glad that we can finally actually 
sit down and talk. And I hope that we can do it in the future. If I'd love like to it. do it again. I got lots more to say. Yeah, we, did, we didn't even talk okay. about hockey. Like, we didn't oh, talk yeah. <laughs> yeah, so The anyway. smell. Oh, those, oh, those, oh, man. If you guys have never been on that, uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, Thank you, Kevin. If you want to wrap it up for us with the uh, our mantra, and then we'll move on. To- oh, okay. So you want to repeat after, or you want to just, just you, say it all together? We can just say it. Okay. You want to repeat? Yes. All right, good. So this is our mantra. You can say it with us if you want. Um, it'll be called and response, so I'll say it, and then you just repeat. All right, so mind. 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 Body. Body. Mind. Spirit. 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 I use my mind to think. I use, I use my, my mind, mind to think. think. I use my body to move. I use my body to move. And I use my spirit to spread love. And I, I use, use my, my spirit, spirit to spread love. love. Mm. Thank you for spreading the love that you have today, the love that took years to cultivate. And we're glad that it can actually be shown. And I hope that this love and light goes out to whoever needs it. So. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Me too. Yes. Thank you. Love you, Master Frankie. Oh, you too. Oh. <laughs> it's a real Oreo now. Yes. <laughs>